Taiwan's defense ministry says China has fired multiple ballistic missiles during a set of military exercises in the air and the sea encircling Taiwan. Beijing launched the drills in response to a visit by Nancy Pelosi, the most senior US official to go to the self-governed island in 25 years. The exercises are taking place in some of the world's busiest waterways. Taiwan sees itself as independent, but China views it as its own. China's foreign ministry said Nancy Pelosi's visit to Taiwan was a violation of the One China principle and justified its military exercises by blaming the United States for the rising tensions in the region. China has repeatedly made clear our stern opposition and stressed that we are firmly opposed to Taiwan independent separatist forces and foreign interference, and we will allow no room for any form of Taiwan independence forces. If the U.S. continues down the wrong path, then all consequences shall be borne by the U.S., and do not say that we have not told them in advance. The U.S. first made a malicious provocation, and China has been compelled to act in self-defense, so whatever we have have done to, in response as a countermeasure would be justified and firm and resolute. Our China correspondent Stephen McDonnell has more from Beijing. For the last couple of days, China has been amassing large formations of planes and ships all around Taiwan. And now the shooting has started. So these are live fire drills. And in those zones, which have been marked out in, to the north, to the south, east and west of Taiwan, the PLA has warned commercial ships not to enter, commercial planes not to fly through that airspace. Interestingly, I, I see that the US Air Force has sent a ship to go, a, a plane there, to go and observe these military drills. This is something the US has done in the past when there have been live fire drills. There's talk that... The, the PLA could consider firing missiles over Taiwan's territory. If that happened, it would be a massive escalation, the likes of which we've not seen. But even already, these, these are unprecedented scenes. I mean, these zones, if they're all used up, they would involve mainland uh, military exercises moving into Taiwan's territorial waters. And, you know... <laughs> You just have to wonder if this was all worth it in terms of a visit. I mean, what are the, if you're adding up the advantages and disadvantages of having the number three leader from the US traveling to Taiwan, certainly a lot of tension, a lot of pressure on that island now. And more concerning potentially is that now that the PLA has done this this year, does that mean what every year it's going to have a dress rehearsal for a blockade of Taiwan, a dress rehearsal for an attack? which you know, an attempt to seize that island and bring it back into the arms of the motherland as China's foreign minister expresses it. So a lot of questions and, and certainly a lot of tensions building around Taiwan as we speak. Stephen McDonnell, our correspondent there in Beijing. Well, Nancy Pelosi is now in South Korea, where she's expressed concern over the increasing threat posed by North Korea. In a joint statement with the South Korean speaker, she said she supported efforts to maintain strong and extended deterrence against Pyongyang. But the South Korean president, who's on holiday, will not meet Ms Pelosi in person, will speak to her by phone instead. Ms Pelosi is expected to visit the demilitarized zone later today before heading to Japan. Well, let's uh, talk now to Professor Kerry Brown, director of the Lao China Institute at King's College London and author of She, A Study in Power. Really good to have you with us, Professor. Mm -hmm. And uh, I wanted to start by asking you about what your take is on these live fire drills by China. Uh, according to our correspondent in Beijing, these are unprecedented scenes. How concerned are you that this action will escalate? Well, extremely concerned. Who can be relaxed about this kind of, you know, issue happening? Uh, China is now, you know, kind of a, a very powerful military power. It doesn't have combat experience, but it certainly has the ability to, you know, kind of uh, move towards this sort of aggression and bullying. Uh, and, you know, it's given China, I suppose, an opportunity to kind of really have a test at what might be possible. So in that sense, uh, the Pelosi visit was kind of an unwanted opportunity, but an opportunity 
uh, and it's one that the Chinese People's Liberation Army and the Navy are taking. Talk to me a little bit about President Xi Jinping's goals. Uh, how central a goal is it to unify Taiwan? And in, if it is a central goal, under what sort of time frame? Well, this is a policy, the reunification of Taiwan, that he didn't create. He's inherited it from every leader of the Communist Party and the People's Republic of China back to 1949. Uh, you know, this has been a major objective. So he doesn't have any kind of real flexibility on this issue. And for his domestic audience, who are, you know, very, very much wedded to China being a great, powerful country, uh, to have the sort of visit by an American key politician, number three in the hierarchy, uh, against all kind of, you know, Beijing demands is obviously a loss of face. So part of this is about uh, ensuring that the Chinese domestic public uh, do not see their leader as being weak. I, I don't think that China wants to undertake any, uh, you know, kind of final military action. That would be obviously an absolute catastrophe. Uh, but they certainly can't be seen as weak. So a lot of the symbolism that we see now is something that is driven by domestic politics, not necessarily from Xi. That's something that Xi is reliant on and has to serve. Why would it be a catastrophe to, uh, for China to have conflict with Taiwan? Because it would completely destroy the key supply chains around one of the world's, well, the, probably the world's key economic area. It would smash apart uh, global semiconductor supply uh, because Taiwan supplies a lot, I think 50, 55% of the world's semiconductors, which we're so reliant on. Uh, it would shatter China's international image and it would create misery for 23 million people on Taiwan and for people involved in China too. It would be uh, a third world war basically because you would have the United States against China, that's what it would involve. And so when you hear politicians and others, you know, talking about this as though it's a confrontation that we must engage in, uh, it's really, we've got to remember the calculations and the risks from this would be absolutely devastating for everyone. Mm, it's interesting, isn't it, that we've almost got to this, this position that we're in this morning because of Nancy Pelosi playing to a domestic audience and Xi Jinping playing to a domestic audience. From President Xi's point of view, how secure is he, given the Chinese response to COVID? And uh, it too is facing economic challenges, isn't it? Well, it is not easy to get rid of a central leader in China. I mean, it's not easy to get rid of a central leader anywhere. But in China, I think that he's secure. Uh, but, you know, the Communist Party of China is seeking legitimacy. And Taiwan is an issue, being tough on Taiwan, that, you know, kind of, they can't, as I say, they don't have much flexibility about. Now, I mean, Pelosi's visit, I completely understand, uh, you know, kind of why America would want to stress solidarity with Taiwan because of the security relationship. I think for the Taiwanese, though, who are caught between this, it's a really mixed blessing. It's good to have America's attention. It's probably crucial to have America's attention. But to be part of a kind of game where Taiwan is just caught between these two superpowers is really, really not comfortable. And the Taiwanese people now, Pelosi was there for 24 hours, she's gone. They're now dealing with the consequences of this. And it must be very uncomfortable to be in Taipei and other cities in Taiwan today when you know about this, you know, kind of escalation happening around you and how missteps could be calamitous. I hope they don't happen, but really, this is not a relaxing situation. Professor Kerry Brown from King's uh, College London, really, really good to talk to you. Thanks so much. Thank you.